Who put those books on the upper shelf? And why were my clothes in the closet reorganized? Did she seriously go into my room and rearrange my stuff? Unbelievable! Avery, dinner's ready. Okay, Dad, wait a sec. My dad shouted back. What's taking you so long? Come down now. Dinner is getting cold. Ugh, okay, I'm coming. As I walked into the kitchen, I gave her a resentful look. What were you doing? You know dinner's always at six. Well, that's because she went into my room and reorganized everything. It was like Hurricane Katrina stopped by my room. I had to put everything back where it was. You must be wondering why I had this attitude towards my mom. Well, first, she isn't my mom. She's my stepmom. And second, I just couldn't stand her. You see, my parents divorced when I was 15. And after just six months, my dad started dating Rose. My first impressions weren't great. I mean, look at her. Okay, she's kind of beautiful, but her style just doesn't fit her age. She has this whole wannabe rocker thing going on. No, I'm serious. She even has a tank top that says, I'm a rocker mom. My actual mom was the total opposite of Rose. She looks how a mom's meant to, with her elegant clothes and polite demeanor. And that's also how she raised me to be. Then there's the age difference. Rose is a decade younger than dad. Suspicious? What if she was only after his money? I thought they wouldn't last, but then one year later, they announced that they were getting married. So, yeah, you can see where my hate was coming from. That's enough of me telling you about my family. Let's go back to this boring dinner. My dad just gently said, Rose was just helping you. She didn't mean it. Now let's dig in. This smells delicious, honey. Ugh, whatever. I rolled my eyes and sat at the table. I looked down and couldn't believe my eyes. It was spinach and sausage lasagna, Mom's signature dish. How dare Rose copy it? First, she rearranged my room, and now she wanted to replace my mom? Talk about a real-life evil stepmom. No way I was going to eat that. So I stood up, said I wasn't hungry, and started walking off. Dad stood up and was about to yell at me, but Rose stopped him. Whatever. I still ran upstairs and slammed my door shut. The next day, when I came home from school, I saw that Rose had a few friends over for beer and pizza in the living room. Look at them. They looked like they were having a band meeting. Normally, women their age have tea parties, not fast food fests. Hey, Avery. Rose greeted me. I just ignored her and went upstairs. But suddenly, I heard one of her friends say, What a stubborn kid. Doesn't she have manners? If I were you, I would show the kid who's the boss around here. Jesus, her friends were awful just like her. Whatever, I didn't care what they said. But then Rose replied, Hey, don't talk about her like that. Avery's a lovely girl. She's just had a lot going on the past two years. Every child would behave the same after their parents' divorce, don't they? She just needs a little time adjusting. Oh, wow. I didn't expect those words coming from Rose. She actually stood up for me? Maybe, just maybe, I've misjudged her. Maybe I should try and give her a fairer chance? So that evening, when I saw her watching a movie, I walked over with a big bowl of popcorn and asked if I could join her. Rose looked shocked, like she'd seen a ghost or something. Then she gave me a big smile and said, Of course, I would really love that. I sat down next to her, and we watched Mad Max together. Oh, wow. There was a lot of violence and some weird-looking characters. Normally, I don't watch these kinds of films. I'm more of a rom-coms girl. But that movie was really, um, interesting. We talked during it. And I must say, Rose is actually kind of cool. We were both laughing when I heard someone coughing behind me. I turned around to see my mom standing there with a frown on her face. Avery? Why didn't you return my calls and messages? Oh, I haven't introduced my mom to you yet. This is my beautiful mom, Melanie. She's a kind, gentle, elegant woman, and also a bit disciplined. 
But that's okay. I still love my mom very much. Mom? What are you doing here? I called you a dozen times, but you didn't answer. Clearly, you're preoccupied. I got worried, so I swung by to check on you. Oh, sorry, Mom. Rose and I were having so much fun that I didn't notice my phone. My mom knitted her brows and asked, Are we still on for shopping tomorrow? You need a new outfit for the debate contest, right? Yeah, of course. I will meet you at the mall after school. Oh, you two are going shopping? That's so cool. Can I join? At that moment, I thought, what a great idea. I mean, so far, they seem to get along okay. But what I didn't know was that a war between my mom and my stepmom had just launched. Rose gave me an excited smile. But mom, on the other hand, didn't look so thrilled. Maybe she was still mad that I missed her calls? So the next day after school, I went outside and saw my mom standing by her car. Oh, was she waiting for me? I was about to walk toward her when I suddenly noticed she was giving dirty looks to someone. Oh my god, Rose was waiting on the other side of the street. I quickly jumped behind some bushes to hide from them. Don't tell me the two were here to pick me up. Suddenly, my phone rang. It was mom. There's no way I was deciding between them, so I told her I was already on my way to the mall. Ugh. Now, let's talk about my fun family day out at the mall. Hmm. It was a disaster. My mom and Rose have very different style, ofs, so my mom chose this elegant black vest and skirt for me, but Rose thought I looked like Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> no offense, she's a badass who brought justice to women, but Rose was kind of right. That outfit just didn't work for me. Then Rose chose this red dress for me. But, oh man, that's kind of revealing. They were constantly dragging me from this shop to the other like they were playing tug of war. And I was the freaking rope. I couldn't handle it anymore. Therefore, I just chose any dress so they'd stop throwing clothes in my face. On the way out of the mall, we passed a piercing shop. I've been wanting a helix piercing at the upper cartilage of my ear. They look so cool. I asked mom, but she profusely refused. Her own words were, it would make you look rebellious. His mom was still strict as always. Nonsense. Rose snorted. Melanie, Avery's old enough to make her own decisions. If she wants a piercing, then let her. Then she turned to me and said, come, I will take you inside. Oh my God, I couldn't believe it. I glanced at Mom, and she looked like she was about to explode with anger. But Rose had a point. I'm already 16 for crying out loud. After 15 minutes, Rose and I came out. Oh, thank God. Did you reconsider getting that ear piercing? Oh, yeah. Rose said that a nose piercing would suit me better. What? Uh-oh. Maybe the nose piercing wasn't such a good idea, because the tension between them was now catastrophic. Hmm, I needed a way to bring them together. So I came up with a brilliant plan. I arranged a holiday in Brazil for us all. I have a friend there, Pedro. He was an exchange student at my school, so he could show us around. Dad was in on the plan. At the last minute, he pretended to be busy and canceled his spot. Perfect. Now Rose and Mom would have plenty of bonding time. As soon as we walked into the hotel lobby, they started fighting over who got to share a room with me. What's wrong with them? We just landed in Brazil. So I took the keys from the receptionist and told them they were sharing, because I'll be by myself. <laughs> then in the evening, after we all got some rest, I waited for them in the lobby. Man, what's taking them so long? Suddenly, I saw two women walking over, and they were pushing each other. My God. It was Rose and Mom. I tried to keep calm and said, Jesus, can you two please stop acting like kindergarten kids? Mom sneered. Well, Rose over here took a 45-minute shower while I urgently needed to use the bathroom. You know how sensitive my stomach is. Rose rolled her eyes. That's because I have a strict beauty routine to follow. At least you got some sleep. I didn't, thanks to your bulldozer snoring. I certainly did not. 
Then they began to stare off like two UFC fighters. I shouted, Enough already! Listen up! I just made a dinner reservation for you two to get to know each other better. I have plans with Pedro, so I'll catch you both later. They were about to refuse, but I gave them this really intense look. Well, at least you're having fun. You two should hit a bar. Nothing can top some Brazilian bars. No drinking! And be back by 10 p.m. tops! Yeah, yeah, I know. Have fun! I waved at them and left the hotel. The next morning, I saw them talking to each other. Actually talking, not bickering. So I walked over to them and asked, Well, how was dinner? Then they told me it was actually really great. They were able to put their differences aside and got along. Success! <laughs> so now I could enjoy the rest of the trip. After breakfast, Pedro came by to take us on a hiking trip in the forest. It was so wonderful. The fresh air, the birds singing. Well, maybe except for the heat and the mosquitoes. Pedro wanted to bring us to this spot he said was perfect for watching the sunset. Awesome! It was all going well at first, but then as Rose avoided a tree branch, it accidentally hit my mom. My god, you hit me on purpose, didn't you? What? That's absurd. I was just avoiding the branch. Oh, please. As if. Are you saying that I'm lying? Hey, guys, stop it. Let's be more understanding and talk things out. Like how you did it last night, okay? That's when I found out that they were just pretending to be friends so that I didn't set up any more dinners for them. Oh my god, unbelievable! After their friendship act was exposed, they began speed hiking, like they were in a competition or something. But yep, after only 15 minutes, they were exhausted and couldn't even stand straight anymore. I began to shout at them. This is great! Your dumb feud is ruining my vacation! Then I walked away to avoid them, but of course, not too far. As I walked, I tried to think of another plan to get them close. Then I realized I'd wandered further away from the group. Okay, Avery, don't panic. Pedro had given me a map of the forest. I just needed to get to that marked X. It sounded easy. Trust me, it wasn't. I walked for hours and still couldn't find the spot. Oh no, it was getting dark and I was totally exhausted. I sat on the ground and couldn't hold back my tears. I was about to lose hope when I suddenly heard Rose and Mom's voices. Oh great, I was lost and could still hear them arguing in my head. I must be losing my mind. But wait, suddenly... They appeared from behind some trees. It was really them. I couldn't believe it. I ran into their arms and gave them both the biggest hug ever and cried like a baby. Before we went to the airport to head home, Pedro came to say goodbye. Thanks for the hiking trip and also carrying out my plan. No problem. Your plan was definitely crazy, but it totally worked. After you went missing, they actually teamed up to find you. They helped one another when one tripped down or got exhausted and kept each other motivated. Pedro grinned at me, then continued. I too was freaking out when I didn't see you at our meeting point. Luckily, I still found you. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that pretending to be lost was a part of my plan, but what I didn't expect was to actually get lost. Thank God for Pedro. And you know what? After that incident... My mom and Rose grew close. Actually, a bit too close, I think. <laughs> they even sometimes hang out without me. Can you believe it? Turns out, even though they have two very different personalities and styles, they still have one big thing in common. They both love me. Yes, it's me, Kate, here again. When I traded places with my doppelganger to avoid being stuck in some ghastly summer school, I didn't expect to end up penniless and having to work in some dusty old homestay. But I suppose it wasn't all bad, as I got to meet Bond. 
So, imagine my surprise when I discovered that not only was he a runaway rich kid like me, but I also caught him hanging out with moi. Well, the other me. Ugh. I hired her to pretend to be me, not to be with my man. Um, looks like it was time to return to my normal life. Miss, without a letter of invitation, I can't let you in. Are you kidding me? Why do I need an invitation to enter my own home? How could they not recognize me? Right at that moment, Clara gracefully got out of a luxury car and entered my house. I shouted over to her, but on seeing me, she gave me a confused look. Then she whispered something to the security guard and went straight inside. Sorry, Miss Kate doesn't know you. Please leave. Huh? How dare she? She wasn't Miss Kate. I was. Did she really think she could treat me like this? Ugh! I'd show her who the real rich girl was. But as I was leaving, I caught a glimpse of myself in a car window. Oh my gosh, I looked horrendous. My once bouncy curls, perfectly made up face, and glamorous clothing were no more. Instead, I had a greasy ponytail, my skin was completely bare, and I was in worn old clothes. No wonder the security guards didn't recognize me. I barely recognized my own self. Well, well, well. How comfortable it is to be back in my room, doll up again, and just take back what's mine. How did you get in here? This is my room, remember? I can run away by myself, so you bet I can sneak back into my own room. Listen here, fake me. Mission's over. It's time you left. What mission? Are you crazy? Get your filthy hands off my stuff! Wow, immerse yourself in the role much, huh? Enough. Now give me my life back. What if I don't? Don't you dare? You think my parents won't recognize me? Seeing as I've been impersonating you for an entire month without question, I doubt it. Besides, they're on a month-long business trip in Dubai. So, who will help you now, huh? O-M-G. She was so arrogant, unruly, and obnoxious. Worst of all, she reminded me of someone. Me! Well, the old me. Why didn't I realize before how awful I actually was? Ignoring Clara's defiant face, I took out my phone and made a FaceTime call to my parents. They had to spot it was me straight away, right? Wrong. They gave us both looks of shocked confusion and they couldn't seem to tell us apart. So they told the two of us to stay at home for the time being while they made arrangements to come back. Huh, is it that hard to distinguish your own daughter from a hick? But anyway, she'll be out of here soon enough. The next morning, we went back to school. Claire looked so trashy in her tiny miniskirt. Jeez, this wasn't a nightclub. Oh, Kate, you look outstanding. Where did you buy it from? <laughs> That's it. My friends will always be able to tell me apart from a fraud. But hang on. No! They were moving toward... Clara! Huh? Are they actually praising her? Wow, there's another Kate here. But it's a faulty version. A lame one. <laughs> my panicked feeling increased as all my friends and Clara burst out laughing. You guys don't recognize me? I'm the real Kate, the one you all idolize, the trendsetter around here. Everyone looked at me in bewilderment and then back to Clara. Look at her pathetic appearance. She's just trying to be a copy of me. After that, Clara and her friends left. Jeez, all it took was one summer away for Clara to turn into me. Ugh, why doesn't anyone recognize me? Seeing Clara living my life with my friends was driving me crazy. I was now seen as the copycat version of my own self. Ugh, no way was I losing to this crafty charlatan. So the next day, I decided to show everyone how charismatic I was. After all, form is temporary, but class is permanent. And soon, 
everyone would realize who the real Kate was, right? <laughs> I waited until Claire was out of the way, then I went over to my group and started recalling some of our old stories that only the real me could possibly know. When Clara returned, oh my, she looked furious. <laughs> One day, when I just entered the cafeteria, I saw my group making a nerdy girl run errands for them. Poof, your mother is the school's measly janitor, so you too are just our dog's body. Now hurry up and go get us some ketchup. When the girl was bringing it to them, one of them tripped her foot and made her face fall down on the plate of sauce. The whole group burst into laughter. I rushed to help her up and scowled at the clique chic girls. <sighs> they may have looked stylish, but beneath it all, they were monsters. But worst of all, it was my fault, as it was my group. I basically created them. What's wrong with her mom being a janitor? That doesn't mean she has to serve you guys. As I can see, all of your legs and arms are working fine. So go get stuff yourself. Wow, look who it is. Do you all believe she's just a lousy replica of mine now? The true clique chic Kate wouldn't blurt out such nonsense. Clique chic all looked me up and down, then gave me disgusted looks. Too much of a saint. What a hypocrite, Kate would never say that. Obviously, she's the fake one. Those whispers made me so angry that I turned as red as the ketchup. Fine, pretend to be me all you want. But you and I both know I'm the real me. And I'm better than ever. You won't be able to keep up that act for much longer. And then to the surprise of the others, I stormed off. That night, social media was awash with my news. Can you believe I was actually being mocked for being the copycat while Clara was being praised? Talk about ridiculous. I scrolled through my old photos and scanned over some of the thousands of likes and compliments. I'd lived in the admiration of everyone. Ugh. Maybe I needed to go back to being the arrogant and snobby old Kate, and then everything would be over. Right? <sighs> Only I couldn't do it. I couldn't be that heartless and selfish version of myself anymore. So how could I end this whole mess of my own making? Ah, there was another way. If there's only one Kate who showed up, there wouldn't be any more fakers. Oh, seems like it's going to be a really good day at school today. But such a shame that our sweet Clara might not be able to join us. Everyone greeted me warmly as they thought that the imposter who was smeared on social media yesterday had been too embarrassed to show her face. Even so, I didn't want to hang out with these stuck-up mean girls anymore. The clique chic group should be disbanded. As I was deep in thoughts, out of nowhere, a nerd blocked my way with a bouquet of flowers. He timidly held them out to me and people began buzzing and pointing. The girls in the group took pictures of him and urged me forward. That's our Kate with her irresistible charms. <laughs> someone's essay's ready for next week. I hesitated, not knowing what to say. I didn't want to accept love from someone I didn't like. People started to frown at my silence. Then a few voices of doubt arose. Why doesn't she accept the bouquet as usual? Perhaps she's not? I saw red. Suddenly, I found this whole pretending to flirt with someone just to have them do our homework absurd. And above all else, it wasn't fair to him. You don't have the guts to do it, do you? Because you're not Kate. Startled, I turned around to see Clara taking the bouquet of flowers from the nerd's hand. I snatched it back angrily. He likes me, not you. He likes Kate, and I'm Kate. That Clara was just so shameless to say that. Did she really think she could be me? Did she think being mean and snobby made her the it girl? How shallow of her. Yes, if it was Kate from the past, I would have received that bouquet and made him do my homework. But the present Kate won't do that. Do it yourself. Stop relying on others to do everything for you. As for you, Clara, let me tell you this. Despite your best efforts, you'll never be me. 
Once a liar, always a liar, you counterfeit. I was done here. I was the real me. And if they couldn't see that, then whatever. So I walked away. Suddenly, a hand pulled me back. It was the nerd. Sorry, but I really don't like you in that way. You really don't have feelings for me? Are you sure? Upon his words, he took off his wig, glasses, and the mole on his face. Bond? Is it really you? I was so shocked that I couldn't believe my eyes. Bond handed me the bouquet and said, You won't say no, will you? Of course, how could I say no? I led him to an empty classroom to talk. Um, why are you here? And what's with the disguise? After I left the homestay, I went back home. My parents did what they always do, and tried to make out like money could solve everything by throwing an extravagant party. I was lingering out of the way when, to my surprise, you walked in with your family. Huh? What party? Oh, he must mean Clara. He continued, I went over to talk to you, but you acted like you'd never met me before, so it didn't take me long to work out this girl wasn't you. I was worried, so I called the homestay and they said you'd left. Determined to solve this mystery, I went to your school and found everyone was in a frenzy, as out of nowhere two Kates had appeared. Both of them were it girls and nothing like the homestay Kate I knew, so in order to suss out the real one, I disguised myself. And my plan worked, as here you are. You're such a trickster! <laughs> but I still have one question. Why did you suddenly leave the homestay that day? So, turns out his passion for marine life led him to run away from his disapproving parents and go to a coastal homestay. Only, when he realized from the newspaper that his parents were looking for him, he didn't want to get the homestay into trouble so he returned home. You should have at least said goodbye to me. I was so down when you left like that. Did you know that? Kate, I'm truly sorry. I never meant to upset you. Actually, I'm kind of crazy about you. After that, Bond drove me home. And guess what? Looks like my parents were back earlier than expected. As for the fake Clara, She'd already fled the scene with a load of my clothes and makeup. But, ugh, whatever. At least she'd finally gone. So, what now? Well, I'm dating Bond, and I'm so happy with him. At weekends, I go to the coast and help him with his marine animal research, which is actually a lot of fun. And I don't even mind having salty air lips. <laughs> I never take my parents for granted anymore and I never force other students to carry out dumb errands for me. And of course, clique chic was no longer a thing. Everyone at school had grown used to the new and improved version of me. Obviously, I'll always be the it girl who sets the trends, but only the decent ones. Finally, after an 11 hour flight, I arrived at LAX, Los Angeles International Airport. It's awesome. I can't wait to see my mom. You see, my dad's French and my mom's American. We used to all live together in France, but then they split up and mom moved back here. Of course, I've talked to her on FaceTime and stuff, but this will be the first time I've properly seen her in five years. I haven't visited before because mom's a super successful businesswoman and she works really hard. That meant she wouldn't have the time to provide me with the attention I needed. But now that I'm 16 and I can look after myself, I'm finally able to visit. So, thanks to my dad and stepmom for my plane ticket birthday present, I'm now in sunny LA for a whole month. Not only do I get to spend time with mom, but I also get to chill out in her enormous villa. Ah, <sighs> bliss. But first, let's get all my luggage, then find a taxi to my mom's. Yeah, unfortunately, she couldn't come to pick me up since she had some work to do. But no problem, I can handle this myself. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon. It's been half an hour and my luggage was nowhere to be seen. Then, this handsome guy approached me and said, Hey, looks like your luggage has gone AWOL. Do you need any help? Cute and helpful. Hmm, 
I could totally get used to U.S. guys. I showed him my ticket, and turns out, I was waiting at the wrong carousel. Oops. After guiding me to the correct one, this guy, whose name I found out was Zach, even pulled my luggage down for me. But one of my cases got stuck and burst open, causing everything to tumble out. Girl, it's not your lucky day, is it? He burst out laughing. Oh well, at least it wasn't all bad. I mean, a cute guy had rescued me, right? He helped me pick up my things, then he offered to drive me to my mom's house. After some 30 minutes, he began to slow down. I looked out the window and, oh my god, this is the chicest villa ever. The pool, the tennis court, the palm trees. It was exactly like a movie star home. I was gawping at the villa when suddenly I heard a car engine sound. Startled, I turned around to see Zack zooming away. My suitcases! I yelled. Ugh, my laptop and iPad were in there too. Oh God, why is this happening to me? And on my very first day in the US? At least I still had my phone and passport with me. Phew. So I called my mom. Needless to say, I was a distraught mess when she arrived. Who'd have thought that such a kind-looking guy would turn out to be a thief? Anyways, my mom could buy me new clothes and things, and I could still have an amazing time in her villa, right? Mom led me to my room and told me to get some rest. After that disaster, I was dead exhausted, so I quickly fell asleep on the comfiest bed ever. When I awoke, it was dark outside. I realized I hadn't eaten anything since the flight, so I went downstairs and checked the fridge and cupboards. Huh? They were all empty. I was still digging around in the kitchen when my mom returned with some burgers. Sweetie, I only got back from my business trip yesterday, so I haven't had time to go to the grocery store. Let's just eat fast food today, okay? I didn't mind, as it was awesome to have dinner with my mom again after such a long time. I took a look around the room. There was barely any furniture here. My mom said that's minimalism. A trendy lifestyle in LA nowadays. Less is more. How cool is that? The next morning we went out, but what's with that old rusty car? Seeing my confused look, she quickly explained that this was only temporary as her car was being serviced. But then mom couldn't get the garage door to open. Turns out, normally she had her own chauffeur. But since I've traveled thousands of miles to visit her, she wanted to drive herself. Huh? How sweet. In the following days, my mom and I enjoyed ourselves in LA. Sunbathing by the pool, spa days, shopping. This is definitely the best vacation of my life. At least until that morning, I was awoken by a loud quarrel. Looking down from the stairs, I saw mom in the living room with a strange woman. She was pointing at the couch. Geez, that's where I spilled soy sauce yesterday while eating sushi. Then mom appeared and sounded flustered. She told me to quickly pack my things as we were leaving. Um, mom, is there something wrong? Oh, nothing, sweetie. It's just that the couch is dirty, so let's just get someone in to clean the entire villa. Wow, mom would deep clean the whole house just because of a soy sauce stain? How rich is she? So, where will we stay this time? A luxurious five-star hotel? Or a magnificent mansion in Beverly Hills? <sighs> but then the car came to a stop in front of some shabby apartment building. Huh? This couldn't be right. Mom told me this was her friend's spare apartment, so we would stay here a few days for convenience. Elena, it's probably best if you stay away from the people in this area. They don't have the same lifestyle as us. You know what I mean. Ugh. Yeah. This place was the opposite of the villa. Cramped room, hard bed, and the bathroom didn't even have a bathtub. Since moving here, mom didn't take me out anymore. In the evenings, she dressed up all elegantly and went out to her fancy work meetings. On one such evening, I was sitting alone watching YouTube, munching on french fries for the fifth time this week, when there was a knock on the door. I opened it, and standing there was a scruffy guy, claiming to be Frankie, the landlord's son. I told him there must be a mistake, as we were only here for a few days. Then I went to close the door, but he blocked it with his foot. 
Miss Anita has rented this apartment for two years. What do you mean a few days? I just saw her take a cab at the front door. Don't lie to me. No, my mom is a successful businesswoman who has a villa in Brentwood Park. Then you must have mistaken your mom for someone else. In short, remind your businesswoman mom to pay the rent. Then he sneered and walked away. How dare he say that? And why did I keep on running into jerks? Ugh! When mom returned, I told her what had happened. I thought she'd find it funny or something, but nope. Instead, she got really mad. You shouldn't have opened the door to him. I told you not to socialize with the people here. Okay, hearing made-up lies about yourself like that must suck, but did she have to be so furious about it? The next morning, I was drinking tea on the balcony when suddenly I saw a familiar face passing by down the street. My god, it was the jerk from the airport. Zack! That thief! I shouted, rushing down, but when I got there, he disappeared. I was still exasperated when a voice came from behind. What on earth are you doing screaming this early in the morning? I turned around to see Frankie leaning against the wall with his arms folded. None of your business, swindler. Huh? Swindler? What do you mean? Quit lying. I already told my mom all about you trying to con money out of me. Hmm. Is that so? So, you think I'm the liar? Before I could answer that provoking question, I heard my mom's voice calling down from the balcony. Hey, rich girl, if you want a reality check, I suggest you come meet me tonight, and we'll go follow your mom. Mom appeared and, frowning, asked me why I was talking to Frankie. I blurted out something about asking for directions, then quickly entered the room and closed the door. Frankie was clearly a thieving, lying jerk, right? But then, why were his words lingering in my mind? I had noticed a few strange things, such as when we were at the villa, I asked mom where the cutlery was, but she couldn't remember. But then in this apartment, she immediately got it. Plus, why was there a photo of her in the bedroom when this was her friend's place? That night, when mom was getting ready to go out again, I spotted her necklace. Only, it was actually my necklace. The one that had been stolen along with the rest of my stuff. My dad got that necklace custom made just for me, so it was a one of a kind, but why did mom have it? I complimented her on it and asked her where she got it from. Blushing, she excitedly told me that this rich man she'd just started dating had bought it for her. Then she said he was taking her for dinner tonight. I forced a smile, but... My head was filled with questions. Who really was... Mom? I secretly followed my mom down the street. Suddenly, a hand patted my shoulder. Let's go. I turned around and it was Frankie. Without saying anything, I nodded and quickly got into his car. And we followed mom's taxi. Hold on. Isn't that the villa we stayed in before? After a while, a luxury car arrived, taking my mom to a nearby expensive restaurant. We peered through the glass wall. There she was. My mom was sitting there, smiling and talking with some man in a suit. Was she pretending to live in that villa to trick that man? Was my mom a gold digger? I couldn't watch any more of this, so I pulled on Frankie's arm. But weirdly, he seemed to be as shocked as I was. Um, wasn't this your idea? So why the pale face? He just shook his head and took me home. We waited in the apartment for Mom to return, and oh boy, it was tense. Around midnight, we heard the door open, and Mom walked in and looked at us in alarm. She started shooing Frankie out of there, but I interrupted her. Mom, I know everything. You've lived here for two years. You're poor, and you scam rich men. Sweetie, it's not like that. Please calm down and I'll explain everything to you. So, it turns out... After divorcing my dad, she was determined to go back to the U.S. and succeed at business. But she failed, and she was so embarrassed, she lied to me and dad. Then when she heard that I was coming to visit, she spent the little savings she had on renting a swanky villa for me. But when I accidentally spilled soy sauce on that expensive couch, she couldn't afford to fix it. So we were kicked out. 
As for the man I was with tonight, I ran into him while walking outside the villa. He's rich and nice. He likes me and I like him too. But what about that necklace? Mom, it's actually mine. It was in my stolen suitcase. My mom gave me a confused look. But before she could say anything, Frankie blurted out, That man's a fraud. Mom and I gaped at Frankie as he turned to me and said, I'm sorry, but I think you guys need to know the truth. Then Frankie told us how that man was none other than Zach's dad. After taking me back to the villa, Zach figured my mom was rich, so he persuaded his dad to come and flirt with her. But how did you dig up the dirt on these guys? Because I know Zach. When I saw Lana chasing him, I knew he'd stolen from her. But he's my friend. Great, so you've both been lying to me. Then I rushed into my room, locked the door, and burst into tears. The next morning, Mom knocked on my door, but I ignored her. Elena, I get that you're upset with me, but I've left a sandwich here, so please at least eat something. I'm really sorry. Just wanted to be the perfect mother for you. Her words caused me to sob all over again. But I can say, from the bottom of my heart, I feel sorry for her. After that, I opened the door and hugged her tightly, and then we both blubbered into each other's arms. I'm leaving L.A. today, with Mum. She's moving back to France with me, where she can start afresh. While I was dragging my suitcase to the taxi, Frankie appeared and apologized to me. I just shrugged and told him it didn't matter anymore. I mean, at least he came clean in the end and saved my mom from that swindler. Hey, rich girl, good luck. And, um, feel free to keep in touch. So, what now? Well, mom is settling back into French life. She has a new job and a chic apartment. I go and stay with her each weekend, and it's good to finally spend time with the real her. As for Frankie, well, we send each other lots of Snapchats. So, okay, maybe I kind of like him. I'm planning to visit him in the summer. Hopefully my next trip to the U.S. won't be as crazy as my last one. <laughs> so, here I am, practicing this tricky pose. I must not fall over. Rosie, straighten your back. Hang in there. You've got this. That's Bradley, my yoga instructor. Can you see that? There are more than a dozen people in this class, yet he only seems to encourage me. Did this mean he liked me? I didn't need to look in a mirror to know my cheeks were lobster red right now. I'm Rosie, by the way, 18 years old. I'm still single. Not to brag, but I know I'm kind of pretty, friendly, and fun to be around. So it's easy to tell that many guys are into me. But why do none of them ever dare to confess their feelings to me? Hmm... What were they so afraid of? Take Bradley, for instance. He clearly liked me, but was too shy to admit it. It was so obvious, as he kept deterring past my mat just so he could check out my position. Even my best friend Joseph noticed that, as every time Bradley approached, Joseph would have this cheeky smirk on and send me signals with his eyes. I already told him not to do that. After class, Joseph kept teasing me about it. He told me Bradley definitely had feelings for me and just needed one more push for leverage. Although I reluctantly told him to stop, he insisted on being the wingman by texting Bradley about me. Bradley, why don't you ask Rosie out? You two look really cute together. Come on, you know that wouldn't work. Huh? <laughs> why not? Because, Joseph, it's you I'm crazy about. I was not okay. What was the problem with all the men around me? Why didn't they like me? I couldn't go on like this. I must have a boyfriend. And I was dead serious about it. So after researching online, I found a dating coach to save me from my tragic single situation. So Martin, my coach, is super handsome, has a six pack, and his business is a big hit. He's helped hundreds of sad single people find love. Flashy enough to trust, isn't it? Still, I was quite nervous when I met him. You know, the feeling that a therapist would judge you before treating you. But actually, he was reassuring, very open, and didn't ask too many questions. Let's just be open about this, all right? Manipulating someone into dating you 
is not the foundation to a healthy relationship. But don't worry, as I have the secret. Day one. And according to Martin, I needed to learn how to approach new people. I'm pretty shy, so taking the initiative was hard for me. But Martin taught me a trick. When I see a cute guy, I need to approach him within three seconds. This way my brain wouldn't have time to think, analyze, then talk myself out of it, and end up missing my chance. Okay, a hot guy was there staring at his phone. I must not overthink. One, two, three, go. Hi. Hi. Um, so I just saw you and I think you're really hot. I'm here to say hi. Thanks for thinking my boyfriend's hot, but he's taken. I panicked, then rushed back to Martin and spluttered out. I, I, I can't. Hey, that was a success. You're just training your mind and body to take action. Go ahead. No way. Should we move to the next step? And this was the next step. I just needed to start a conversation in this place where everyone was in a mood to have a chat. It's simple, Rosie. Put yourself in a talkative mood. Go over to them and give them a compliment. But make sure it's genuine, else it won't count, okay? Got it. I spotted a man sitting alone, so I walked over to him. Hey, I like your... ring. O-M-G. Was that a wedding ring? <laughs> don't, don't worry. I'm single. And is it that hard to think of something to compliment me on? <laughs> and, um, you are smarter than you look. And yep, he left. Oh, what kind of compliment was that? Martin sat in a corner and watched me go from guy to guy and stutter out a string of terrible compliments. You did great, Rosie. Don't be discouraged. Now, when you actually see someone you like, you'll be more natural. Martin said that body language is a crucial part of keeping the conversation going. So, the plan was to practice this at Joseph's birthday party. This time Martin couldn't be there in person, but we still stayed in touch via my Bluetooth earphone so he could guide me. The mission today was to initiate physical contact with someone and make them feel close to me. Anyone who knows me knows that I am not good with these things. So I kept giving them this weird slap on the back. Hey, I heard an ouch. Are you hitting them? I said just a light tap. I don't think I can do this. I'm too shy. And now guys are giving me weird looks. Martin said this time I should make the boys take the initiative, and then things would come more naturally. Okay, I'll give it one last try. This boy I like, Nathan, is over by the pool. But he's in a group. Nothing to worry about. You'll make him come to you. Now listen and follow. I walked over to the bar and made sure I was in Nathan's eyesight sat as naturally as possible, made eye contact with him, and smiled. Oh, Martin, this is stupid. He doesn't even know me. Just wait. OMG. He's waving at me. Should I come now? No, no, no. Wave him over. Okay. You should take responsibility for this, Martin. I waved Nathan over. Then, to my surprise, he got up and started walking toward me. OMG, help. What should I do? Give a no-tooth smile. Then say, I just want to say hi. What? That was all? But he was coming closer and I had no choice. I just want to say hi. And I want to have your phone number, cutie. I couldn't believe it. That was a real success. We texted the whole night. We got on so well. He was clearly flirting with me. This is crazy. But then two weeks passed by and I didn't hear from him at all. I kept on looking at my phone, expecting Nathan to call, but he never did. So I immediately rang my coach for help. Ready for the bad news? So, that means he doesn't like you. A busy man like Napoleon could still write thousands of romantic love letters to his Josephine. If he was into you, he'd always find a way. And I also think he doesn't seem like a good type to date. What? Nathan is such a sweet guy. Maybe he's just super busy? But then Christmas came, and I couldn't wait any longer. I mustered up the courage to ask Nathan out. But guess what? He invited me to his house to enjoy Christmas with his family instead. Oh, wow. He wanted to introduce me to his family. This was massive. It meant he really took our relationship seriously, didn't he? But when we got to Nathan's place, to my surprise, it was just a small apartment and definitely not big enough for a whole family. Seeing my confused look, Nathan said his family must have changed their plans and went out. 
which was for the better as the two of us would have more time together. Suddenly, I saw a shadow of a girl in a red dress in his bedroom. The Nathan immediately pulled me away and said, Uh, um, that's my maid. How annoying. So, do you want to go to the hotel so we can have more time alone? Really? Did he think I was born yesterday? I refused immediately, and Nathan began to change his attitude. <laughs> okay, but I can't drive you home. I have something urgent. But don't worry, I'll take you to the nearby bus stop. I have never felt so stupid. Martin was right. Nathan wasn't serious about me. He just wanted to use me. But what went wrong? I did everything I could, but I kept failing again and again. No one liked me. I called Martin in tears, and he ended up driving there to pick me up right on Christmas Eve. I felt like the most tragic person ever. Martin was so patient. He turned the radio on so loud and didn't say anything until I finished crying and calmed down. Misread the signals again, huh? How could I have known? Well, I'm not saying this to make money off you, but looking at the current situation, I think you need to hire me for longer than you think. My love life may have sucked, but at least I had Martin. Here's my hope. He was the best coach ever, as he didn't mind answering my questions, and he always picked up the phone whether it was office hours or midnight. Then one night I was out with my friends. I drank a few too many wines and phoned Martin up and slurred out a load of drunken nonsense. He immediately came to pick me up and drove me home, saying that he needed to make sure I got home safely. He was such a sweet guy. I felt something, but then reassured myself that he was just being nice. But Joseph insisted that Martin was only acting this way because he liked me. Seeing everything he did, and you still have to wonder about his feelings? Dummy. Believe me, I'm not wrong this time. Mr. Sixpack is crazy about you. Congrats. Hmm. Thinking about it, it did make sense. So I started stalking my coach on social media and daydreaming about him. Then, taking Martin's own advice that I needed to make my feelings known. So, on Valentine's night, I, myself, made this box of chocolates and took them round to his. I took a deep breath, then rang the doorbell. But then, standing at the door was him holding hands with another girl. I awkwardly said, Don't, don't you like me? I mean, you taught me that when a guy likes a girl... He'll always be there for her. You picked me up in the middle of the night, and you always listened and comforted me when I was sad. You even brought me hot tea when my Aunt Flo came to visit. Doesn't everything match up? R Rosie, I was just being nice. Sorry, but you've confused the signs. Again. I was totally dumbfounded. I couldn't face the thought of seeing Martin ever again, so I blocked him from my life. Ugh. In the following days... I was under a variety of emotional states, from extreme stress, heartbreak, embarrassment, then disappointment because of my extra delusion. I struggled with insomnia almost every night and tried to bury my feelings by binge-eating junk food. Just two weeks later, I looked at myself in the mirror. There were dark circles under my eyes, my skin was dry and flaky, and I felt bloated and sluggish most of the time. Seeing myself like that reminded me of something Martin had said. How can you expect someone else to love you if you don't love yourself? I knew I needed to change, so I started eating more healthily, working out, and finding me time. And you know what? It worked. Now I can finally say that I see my own worth, and I'll never allow a man to treat me badly ever again. And if that means I stay single for a while, then that's the way it'll be. I guess I kinda owe Martin a lot. I mean, he did teach me loads. And now, even though I'm still single... I'm enjoying it. There are way more important things than having a boyfriend, right? But wait, was this barista winking at me? OMG, there's a post-it with his number on my coffee cup. What should I do? Hey, dating a coffee guy is risky business. Why, coach? Imagine one day your relationship turns bad and you desire a cup of coffee to ease your heart out, but you also have to see him here. Awkward, huh? Indeed a pro. But so why are you making this awkward convo? <laughs> Rosie, I may be a love coach, but even I get it wrong sometimes. When it comes to my heart, all theories are nonsense. Please, you show me how to love naturally. Um, 
Well, as you can see, I'm dating my dating coach. But now, our love doesn't apply to any cliches. Instead, we just do us, and we're both happier than ever. If you're in a dating slump, then don't worry. Just let love happen when it happens, and follow you. Hey, I'm Connor, and I'm currently taking a well-deserved break from studying to hang out with my friends. I go to college at the Georgia Institute of Tech, and I'm sure to be a top-notch architect one day soon. Now I just have one thing to deal with, then I can properly enjoy my night off. Oh, here she is. Connor, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to hurt you, but sorry, we should stop seeing each other. Ah, well, every ending is a new beginning. <laughs> Cheers. I was the master of getting girlfriends I'm tired of to break up with me. It was great. As this way, no one could ever accuse me of being a bad boy. <sighs> what to do now? I reluctantly had to find a new challenge then. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to turn this in. Um, that's okay. Just trying to find one more paper. Uh, um, what's your name? <laughs> I'm Connor. Hi. Hmm, her sparkling eyes, her shiny hair, her soft hands. But ugh, why was suddenly some nerd dragging me away from the hot girl and into a corner? Before I could ask him what was going on, he started waving a photo of this girl in my face. So it turns out this dude is called Patrick, and the girl in the photo is Paige, his girlfriend. Their parents are both influential sorts and organize their whole engagement. Sounds great, right? I mean, she's pretty cute. But no, he wanted me to find a way to make Paige break up with them. I've heard a lot about you. I need your help. I can't do this myself. <laughs> huh? Sure, I get it. A real man will never be the one to break up first. I might be able to help, but first, let's see what kind of person she is. The conversation started to become super serious. From the sound of it, this page girl was a genuine, good-natured girl with a vulnerable side. So this needed to be handled with extra care, so that there wouldn't be any awkward family provocations for my clients. Hmm, perhaps... Nah, this way wouldn't work. Neither would that way. I was about to give up when suddenly Patrick stacked a pack of money, approximately $1,000, on the table. Help me, then it's all yours. Whoa, that was a lot of money to me. It would get me the magnificent PS5 of my dreams. <sighs> Besides, with my charm and handsome looks, I could make Paige fall in love with me and leave Patrick in no time. Genius! My debut had to be spectacular, so I looked online and hired some people pretending to be thugs to block Paige's path. Then I'd waltz in and rescue her. The plan was all set, so I leisurely walked to the rendezvous spot, but... Oh, no. Who knew those guys were real thugs? They threatened us, asked us to hand over all our belongings, then forced us to go to some abandoned warehouse. Oh, my God. The $1,000 was so not worth losing my life for. Yes, I was somewhat afraid, but my flirtatious instinct kicked in, and I turned to Paige and started talking to her. Oh, man, she's super sweet. And I notice that when she talks about something that interests her, she crinkles her nose. She's so cute, but most of all, she's really smart. Why, you ask? Because just an hour later, the cops showed up and arrested the thugs. Turns out, before Paige handed over her belongings, she quickly texted the thug's license plate to a friend and asked her to call the cops. Phew! And, luckily for me, thanks to this destiny meeting, I got a little more information about her and learned that Paige was planning to learn Spanish to major in tourism there. But there's one more important thing. That is, I think, I have a crush on her. She's not like any other girl I've met before. I want to win her heart, truly, not just because of the plan. It will be the best of both worlds. Patrick gets to be free of Paige, as requested. But she won't end up a lovelorn girl because she'll have a new handsome boyfriend by her side. Yep, that'll be me. <laughs> there was just one problem. In all the commotion of the day, I'd forgotten to ask Paige for her number. Oops. I had asked Patrick for it and then texted her, but sadly didn't receive a response. Hmm. I needed to be smart about this, so I decided to pretend to be a Spanish tutor. Yeah, I can't speak Spanish, but with my charm, that's no big deal, right? I created a flashy profile and told Patrick to pretend to surf and accidentally find me. Then show Paige. And so, ding! Hola, yo soy Professor Connor. But wait, sheesh! If only I'd studied Spanish harder in high school. And now the extent of my Spanish were just a few words I'd picked up from binge-watching Money Heist. So I just copied down Spanish lessons off YouTube and taught these to Paige. I don't know if it's because of my teaching skills or my charisma, but Paige seemed to think I was legit. 
However, my flirting tricks weren't going so well. I knew she liked me. I mean, who wouldn't like me? Besides, she gave me these cute looks and laughed at my jokes. Our chemistry was undeniable. So when I reached over and placed my hand on top of hers, I felt sparks fly. But then she gave me this awkward look and moved her hand away. She liked me, right? So why was she acting like this? I never failed at flirting. Feeling frustrated, I was trudging my way up the street when, huh? Was that Patrick happily holding hands with a girl? I recognized the long hair. It was Paige. Ugh, why can't she drop her lousy boyfriend already? And why won't she date me instead? I was about to leave, but the more I thought about it, the more resentful I became. So I bribed a little boy to run up to Paige and say, Why aren't you with Connor, you cheater? Mean, huh? But haha, <laughs> Patrick would be pleased as he now had a legitimate excuse to break up with her anyway. But when the girl turned around, I realized that she wasn't Paige. The poor girl looked completely dumbfounded. Patrick started yelling at her and pulling on her arm so hard she almost fell over. Huh? Where's the nerd Patrick? And that wasn't cool at all. Then he raised his hand to hit her, but I zoomed in front of him. Stop! No reason to hit a woman, bro! Patrick immediately grabbed my collar. You dare play tricks with my Becky, huh? Seeing that, the shocked girl quickly ran away. No, no, I thought it was Paige, so I hired the boy just to give you an excuse to break up with her. Calm down, bro. Patrick reassessed the situation, then he cleared his throat and said, Oh, well, uh, I was bored of Becky anyway, thanks. I was still shocked by this jerky side of Patrick when he immediately said, "Uh, By the way, you can stop the plan with Paige. I decided I like her now. Lately, she's been so full of life and less clingy. He told me he would still pay me, then he hopped into a taxi. Ugh, that's the version of Paige when she's with me. I gave her that zest of life, you jerk. Whatever, from this day forth he was no longer my client and I didn't want his stupid money. (sighs) It was time I told Paige what Patrick was really like, so I arranged to meet her in a cafe and told her everything. But when she got over the initial shock, she snapped at me. I know this is all part of your twisted fabrication. I mean, you lied about speaking Spanish, and now you're just making up stories to break Patrick and me up. Then she threw my textbook back at me and stormed off. Oh man, that Patrick is such a slimeball. But I couldn't blame her for believing him over me. I'd seen firsthand how much of a wolf in sheep's clothing he was. I tried to find proof to show Paige, but that jerk sure covered his tracks. His whole nerdy bookworm facade was flawless. And he was still this sluggish nerd, wobbly clutching the bus handle to go to school every day. Ugh, what a con man. Just you wait, Patrick. It's time the world saw your true face. With such determination, I continued to spy on him around town. Then one time, like every other day, I was on duty when a group stopped me, accompanied by Patrick pointing at me. Here's our sandbag. Uh Uh-oh, looks like I was busted. The whole group gathered around me, fists ready. Yeah, I was pretty terrified. There's no way I could fight off a group this size. I raised my fists and prepared for pain, but then someone shouted, Stop! It was Paige. Suddenly, Patrick immediately changed his attitude and ordered the group to leave. He told Paige that I stole his stuff and his friends were helping him get it back. What? The swine! Connor isn't a thief, I know it for sure. There must be some misunderstanding. Please don't accuse him like that. Patrick's face changed. He grabbed Paige's hand and pulled her away, saying, We're getting engaged at the end of this month. Say no more. Okay, so I may have gate-crashed their engagement party, but I did hide at the back while the speeches were going on. Then to my surprise, as Patrick was talking, they both spotted me. Then Paige turned to him and shook her head. It hurt to see her like this. Perhaps she changed her mind. What do you mean? Is this because of Connor? Paige kept quiet, while Patrick's parents were furious. How dare you cheat on my son? Who do you think you are? Paige, why is this happening? Really, Paige, say something. Feeling the pressure and injustice of it all, poor Paige looked distraught as she desperately tried to hold back her tears. I really couldn't stand seeing her like that, so I jumped out of the crowd to come to her defense. Everyone calm down. Paige is the sweetest, most amazing girl, and she deserves better than this jerk. Don't listen to him. He's a thief and a fiancé stealer. I was done listening to this guy's slander. So I threw a punch straight at his smug face. Yeah, the engagement party had sure turned chaotic. I looked at the wreckage in front of me. The consequences that I had caused. Okay, so maybe coming here wasn't my best idea. Actually, this was all my fault for ever agreeing to help Patrick in the first place. Or I shouldn't have been a jerk in the first place. Feeling deflated, I arrived home and saw that I'd received a message from Paige. 
My heart thudded as I opened it. Thank you for everything and try to practice your Spanish as it's even worse than mine. Goodbye. And that was the last text she sent me. After that, I spent a month trying to contact her but received no reply. So finally, I plucked up my courage to go to Paige's house and was told that she'd left for Spain earlier than scheduled. Perhaps the shock was so huge that Paige wanted to leave this place as soon as possible. It was all my fault. I was the biggest jerk in this story and now I'd lost the girl. Alas, vengeance is bliss. So I walked inside, went straight to Patrick's table where he was wasted in the arms of a bunch of girls, took a picture and sent it to his family. What is done by night appears by day, my friend. A few days later, I heard that after being exposed, Patrick's parents had confiscated all of his bank cards. Even his current girlfriend dumped him. Ha! So that sealed the final breakup deal for my special guest. And now, guess where I'm at? Looking for the girl of my life, duh. And this time, I'm going to make sure I don't screw it up. Being the awesome class president that I am means that it's my job to show this new transfer student, Willow, What's what around here? So, obviously this is the canteen. Heads up, don't eat the stew. Yuck. If you have any trouble finding something, just ask me. Well, I haven't seen you since middle school. What's up? Um, just still the same. Um, okay. Oh, you must be confused, but actually I already know Willow. You see, we went to the same middle school together, but to be honest, we never really talked to each other back then. She seems to still be as quiet as always. Oh, and by the way, I'm Natalie, but you can call me Nat. The next few days, I saw Willow always sitting in a corner of the classroom and doodling. She looked kind of lonely, so being a nice person, I decided to sit and talk to her. Hey, Willow. Nice shirt. She just gave me this weak smile, then continued doodling. Ugh, talk about awkward. The best thing I could do was just to stupidly smile back, then swiftly left. I didn't really bother with Willow after that. I mean, I said hi if we passed in the hallway or something, but that was it. But it turns out Willow's introverted tendencies hadn't gone unnoticed by other students. As when we were on our school expedition to the woods, I overheard them talking about her. Do you all think that Willow seems a bit weird? Yeah, you're totally right. One time I asked to borrow her eraser, and she just gave it to me without saying anything. She didn't even look me in the eye, just kept on drawing. It was so strange. Huh? Are they seriously gossiping about a new kid? Yeah, so she might not be too sociable but people should just learn how to respect someone's personal differences, right? Hey, Willow is new here. I don't think it's very nice of you to gossip like this. Also, she's my friend from middle school, so please stop this. But just wondering, has she always been like this? Um, yeah, I guess. Actually, I was quite surprised to see her in our class. In middle school, her grades weren't that good, so it's kind of odd that she's in the top set with us. I could see the whole group was looking at me with surprised eyes. But hey, that was a few years ago. Now, so maybe she's changed. I quickly corrected myself. Then, a few days later, I was standing by my locker when suddenly my best friend Layla appeared and gripped my shoulders. Oh my god, have you heard the news? Everybody is saying Willow only got into top set because her parents made a huge donation to the school. Can you believe that? What? Who's spreading this absurd rumor? I don't know, but someone's saying that she wasn't that smart in middle school. Oh. My. God. Was the rumor culprit me? It was me! I did it! At the expedition! Oh no, I I didn't mean to! Oh, how could I let this happen? Then when I entered class, I noticed a sobbing willow being comforted by some other students. I felt horrible, so I also went over to her and tried to cheer her up. Don't worry about it, willow. Everyone knows this rumor is a lie. Why would anyone do such a thing? I mean, I just transferred here. Who would hate me so much to say something so mean? Oh, man. I sure felt guilty. Oh, could things get any worse? Um, yeah. Turns out they can. As after class, Miss Holmes suddenly asked me and Willow to stay behind. Oh, no. Did she know I was the one who started the Willow rumor? I sat there sweating like a turkey at Thanksgiving, waiting for Miss Holm to bust me. But then to my surprise, she said, Nat, please, can you help me get to the bottom of this horrible rumor? Phew, what a relief. But at the same time, I was freaking out. How was I supposed to catch the person responsible when I was the one who started the rumor? Albeit accidentally. Ugh, what a dilemma. Wait a minute. I think I have an idea. 
What about I blame it on a troublemaker? It's not like they would care anyway. Whilst I'm a straight A student and getting into trouble for this could affect my chances to get into a prestigious college and ruin my life. Right at that moment, this guy called Bob shoved past us, then leaned against the wall and scrolled through his phone. Bingo. Gotcha. I put one hand against the wall and gave him a suspicious look. Hey, Bob. How you doing? Um, fine. So, about this Willow rumor? Who did you hear it from? Bob just shrugged and continued staring at his phone. Or did you do it? Maybe you were bored. So you spread the rumor to tease the new girl. Am I right? Or what? Only by then, Bob looked at me. What? Are you crazy? I don't know this Willow girl. Besides, I was off all last week sick. Now leave me alone. Oh man, this was a massive fail. Now what should I do? I needed a minute to think. Okay, don't panic, Nat. You're smart, so you'll think of something. That's when I turned and caught a glimpse of Willow's sad face. Don't worry, I will find out who did it. I comforted her. But inside I was screaming. I hated lying to her, but this was an accident. I never meant to spread that rumor. At that moment, Layla appeared and said she wanted to help. Great! Like this quest wasn't complicated enough. Ugh. Layla told us that she heard the rumor from this nerd, Ben. So we all tracked him down and asked him. But he heard it from some other dude, and it went on and on until a girl said that she heard it from Ashley. That's when I remembered that Ashley was on the talking group in the expedition. Oh no, I had to stop this encounter between us. So when they spotted Ashley, I started making weird noises and made out I had a stomach ache. They were still going to her, so I had to scream loudly like I was in labor. In the medical room, I continued screaming as if I was in a lot of pain. The nurses diagnosed that it might be appendix pain, so I immediately needed to be transferred to the hospital. I instantly stopped screaming as soon as I heard that and said, it's just that time of the month. Phew, that was close. But at least I've successfully stopped them from investigating Ashley. Well, I spoke too soon, because right that second, Ashley walked into the medical room. But thank God she didn't mention me. Instead, she said Carl told her about it. Phew. To my luck, Carl was absent today, so the manhunt had to end here. It would unfortunately continue tomorrow, though. As we warily walked out of school, I glanced over at Willow and saw that she looked really down. Ugh, oh, that made me feel so bad. So to make it up for her, I asked her if she wanted to grab a sandwich. My treat, of course. And she said yes. Mmm, that sandwich was so good. And Willow seemed to enjoy hers, too. It was great to see her happier, so I decided to extend our trip by going to the mall. Willow kept on glancing at this dress, but it was out of her price range, so being the awesome friend that I am, I bought it for her as a gift. Well, that's the least I can do after everything I'd done to her, right? But then I noticed something weird. When I was standing at the counter to pay for it, I turned around and saw her smirking. Then when she saw me looking at her, she immediately smiled and thanked me for the dress. Huh, so strange. The next day, the rumor scavenger hunt continued. Ugh. We cornered Carl and questioned him, but he couldn't remember where he heard it from. Layla asked him to think carefully, and he just shrugged and said he had no idea. Layla got suspicious, so she immediately reported him to the principal's office. I didn't even have a chance to stop her. The next thing I knew, we were being called out over the loudspeaker and summoned to go to the principal's office. Then Carl confessed that yesterday he got an anonymous message via Facebook saying that they were willing to pay him if he agreed not to tell the name of the person who told him the rumor. He showed us his phone, but all the messages and the user account didn't exist anymore. That's right. I was the anonymous user who contacted Carl yesterday. Thank God I deleted the messages and the account on time. But things weren't that simple. The principal decided to suspend Carl for withholding information. Finally! My plan worked! But why wasn't I feeling happy about it? On the contrary, I felt... Bad. Really, really bad. Blaming someone for my mistake wasn't right. I couldn't do that to Carl. So I stood up and blurted out, It was me all along. I started the rumor, but it was an accident. Well, and that's it. Cue a two-week suspension. Now Willow is refusing to hear my apology and everyone else thinks I'm some villain. Only Layla has stuck by my side and remained adamant there was more to the story. Then, a few days later, when I was trying to curb my boredom with potato chips and a Love is Blind marathon, Layla came by and told me the shocking news. There may be a chance that I wasn't the person who spread the rumor about Willow. The thing is, Layla continued asking around school and ended up with a girl named Rosa, who had a reputation for gossiping. 
Rosa told Layla that she was in the bathroom when suddenly a girl in the cabin next to her started telling her about the rumor. Rosa found it odd, so she bent down to see who it was, but the only thing she could see was a pair of pink Nike Air Force One. Then Layla asked me, You know who always wears those, right? I nodded. But objectively, there could be other girls who own the same shoes, correct? Fortunately, Rosa also noticed an important detail that will help us close the case. The right shoe has a tear mark. I checked our suspect's shoes, and they match. (gasps) So we finally knew who really did it. We just needed a plan to trap them. The next day, we called Willow to meet us at a cafe and told her that we found the real culprit. But when Willow arrived, she immediately got mad and yelled at me. Stop blaming it on somebody else. Maybe the person heard you when you were speaking about me during the expedition trip. As soon as Willow said that, Layla and I immediately looked at each other and grinned. What's so funny? I never told you that I spread the rumor at the expedition. I didn't even tell the principal. I only confessed that I was the one who said it. That's all. Willow looked shocked. Then we told her about Rosa and how she saw Willow's shoes. So Willow couldn't deny it anymore. Okay, it was me. I've never liked you and you think you're so perfect. So at the expedition when I overheard you talking about me like that, it made me so mad that I came up with the idea to spread the rumor about myself and then blame it on you. So you'd look like a horrible person and I'd get people's sympathy. A genius plan, right? Oh my, oh my. Who would have thought that the victim herself was actually the one who did the crime? Layla got so mad that she immediately wanted to report Willow to the principal, but I stopped her. I realized that it was partly my fault too. If I hadn't told people anything about Willow, then this never would have happened. So, well, after that, Willow and I stopped talking to each other. Actually, if I see her in the hallway, I'll purposefully walk the other way. But anyway... Thanks to this incident, I learned some valuable lessons. Never, ever gossip, as it's just not worth it. And also, choose your friends wisely. That's my dad, Marcus Baldwin, the world-famous jockey. Now he's the chairman of a super successful horse racing club. As his cherished only child, I was given everything I could ever dream of. But then, something big happened that changed things. Before I tell you more, don't forget to like and subscribe. At the age of eight, I was in the playroom brushing my doll's hair when dad let this tatty looking woman and her daughter in. Audrey, I'd like you to meet Belinda and her mom. They're going to be staying here for a while and be our new mates. Belinda looked so frightened, so feeling bad for her, I took her hand and let her play with my dolls. We soon became the best of friends and I even managed to persuade dad to let her attend the same school as me. Unsurprisingly, I grew up obsessed with horses and dreamed of becoming a famous jockey like dad. I practiced riding my horse, Jackal, every day after school, and we became quite the formidable team. Soon, I was winning a heap of junior contests, and even the newspapers predicted I'd be the next big name in the world of horse racing. This certainly helped my popularity at school, and I began a clique full of elite members. However, there was one slight problem. Due to Belinda's humble background, the other girls didn't get with her. Where did you get those shoes from? Your grandma? Did you let your grandma style your hair too? Come on, girls. Let's see if the canteen has any oat muffins left. Everything was practically perfect. And to put the cherry on top of the cake, I was invited to a gala event for talented young jockeys. I needed to look the part, so I got my driver to take me to the mall to find the most amazing outfit. But on the way, everything changed. I woke up in the hospital, wearing an ugly gown and feeling dizzy with confusion. Oh my, you're awake! Huh? Why am I here? Sweetie, you were in a car accident. You've been in a coma for the last two years. Two years? What? No way! That meant I'd missed out on two whole years of my life and was now 17! I missed my own sweet 16! Once I got over the initial shock of being Sleeping Beauty, I made sure to ask the most important question. Is Jackal okay? Who won the Grand Youth Championship? After catching up with my parents, they told me something even more surprising. Audrey, you've been very poorly, and we thought we were going to lose you. You needed a new kidney, but we weren't matches. But Belinda was, and she donated you hers. We are so grateful to her that when her mom sadly passed away, we decided to adopt her. She's now your sister. I was sad to hear about Belinda's mom, but grateful for what Belinda did for me. I'd always seen her as my sister anyway. Right after I got discharged from the hospital, I was excited to get back to school and resume my life. Only, it seemed the world had moved on without me. 
No one dressed like me anymore, and I was stuck in a class with 15-year-olds. I tried to interact with them, so when I saw the teacher pinning up a picture of an elderly man, I asked if this was her grandpa. The whole class fell silent for a second, then suddenly exploded with laughter. It's the president, Audrey. Ugh, how was I supposed to know? At lunchtime, when I went to join my old friends, I overheard them talking. 2021 called. It wants its tennis skirt back. Hmm? What language is she speaking? Oh my god, Audrey is like an alien. She doesn't know anything. I mentioned the lucky girl syndrome trend and she literally looked at me like a fish. Come on now, you know she can't help it. Let's go get some cheese fries. Anything you say, Belinda. <laughs> Belinda was on my side, right? Hmm, it kind of felt like she'd stepped right in and taken my place. At least my parents would be glad to have me home, right? Wrong. Mom was always shopping, attending yoga class and the spa, but she didn't ask me to go with her. Instead, she always asked Belinda. It felt like she'd forgotten that me, her real daughter, actually existed. Meanwhile, at the riding club, as I traipsed through the stables, I heard Dad talking to Belinda about an upcoming event. I'm so lucky you're here to help promote this event. I'd be lost without you. I no longer fit in at school, at home, or at the horse racing club. Life has changed around me, and I felt frozen in time. <sighs> Worse still, I had to take this gross medicine. One time my maid was chasing me around the furniture trying to make me take it, but I used ornaments, cushions, and books to block the path. I was so distracted making my obstacle course that I bumped straight into Douglas Barron, my dad's business partner. My, my. You certainly are a determined young lady. Later that evening, Dad called me into his office. I thought he was going to grumble at me for not taking my meds, but instead he said something I wasn't expecting. It seems that Douglas is rather impressed by you. He wants you to date his son, Damien. The firm's been under a lot of pressure recently, and having Douglas on side would be beneficial, especially as he's our biggest stakeholder. What? You want me to date a stranger just to help your business? I can revive the business myself without having to do that. I just need to win the horse racing tournament. No, it's too soon after the coma. You're not ready yet. Dating is the only way. Pfft. As if I was going to listen to dad. So I secretly came here with Belinda. I was about to saddle up Jackal, but then I got a whiff of horse manure and began to feel dizzy and nauseous. Dad suddenly showed up and took me to the hospital. Turns out, I'm allergic to horse manure. Ugh. Then Dad started yelling at me for training without his permission. Thankfully, Belinda informed me what was going on and told me about your allergy. Belinda? Why? Sorry, sis. I only told Dad as I'm worried about you. Whatever. I'm still going to horse race again. Actually, there's physical therapy, and if you pass the agility test, you could still get back to training. Dad, please. Fine. Do the therapy, but only if you go on this date with Damien. I agreed to go on the date, but I never said anything about being well-behaved on it. <laughs> so in order to prepare for our special date, I watched this tutorial video. How to dress to attract men. A tutorial. Rule number one, make sure your hair is long and never put up. Rule number two, make sure to show a little skin, ladies. Rule number three, footwear should be dainty and delicate. And ta-da! As I showed up at the restaurant looking ridiculous, I instantly recognized this quirky guy from school, Damien. So I made sure I had the most unapproachable expression on my face. As soon as I sat down, I purposely ordered the weirdest food combo, ice cream hamburger. <laughs> I was convinced he'd think I was a lunatic and leave, but instead he reached over and drank a bite of my ice cream burger. Hmm, interesting. What? How could he like that? Someone please call the food police over here. Your fashion sense is so refreshing. Everything about you is fascinating. I am rather smitten. The rumors about him being quirky are definitely true. After the disastrous date with Damien, I met with Cooper, a medical student at the hospital who was helping me with my physical therapy. During the training, he was attentive and super encouraging. I was beginning to feel better, but then Damien showed up and insisted on staying there so he could check Cooper was doing his job properly. He wouldn't stop humming annoying tunes and munching on potato chips really loudly. Then at home afterward, he wouldn't leave and continued bugging me. When he finally left, I moaned to Belinda about how annoying he was. But to my surprise, she said she thought he was cute and funny? Hang on, does this mean Belinda likes Damien? On the day of the physical examination, I passed every single test without any mistakes. I was smiling as the doctor made his announcement. Miss Baldwin, I'm afraid you failed the assessment. I ran out of there and cried to myself. I felt someone sit next to me and was about to tell them to go away when I realized it was Cooper. Audrey, the improvements you've made are impressive. I was sure you'd pass. 
seeing his caring face made me feel a little better. We talked some more, and then he offered to drive me home. As we walked around the corner to the parking lot, we heard Belinda raising her voice with, The doctor! We stopped to listen. I'm not giving you more money! I already paid you for failing Audrey! Sign this, so I can be sure you'll keep this a secret! What? How could Belinda betray me like this? Belinda, why? Why did you do this? You don't understand how hard it is living in your shadow. I love the horse riding club, but you're coming back, and there will be no use for me there anymore. You ruined everything! Then she stormed off, leaving me standing there stunned. I immediately got home and told Dad what she'd done. I expected him to be on my side, but... I'm sure you're overthinking the situation. Besides, you should be grateful to Belinda. Not only did she save your life, but now she has agreed to marry Damien to save the company. Ugh! Belinda was only doing this to steal my life! It wouldn't work. I was more determined than ever to go back into horse riding and claim back my life. MINE! Meanwhile, Cooper helped find another doctor to test me, and this time I passed. I showed my results to Dad, and he finally allowed me to go back to training. But when I brought up Belinda bribing the doctor again, he just remained quiet. Am I even his daughter anymore? Okay, change of plan then. I met up with Damien to ask about his marriage with Belinda. So, did you agree to the marriage? No way! I don't want to marry whatever her name is. Great! I mean, that's sad. Well, my heart belongs to you. Hmm, how about we get payback on them and fake date? Just faking it, though, if you don't mind. Fake? Real? If it means being your boyfriend, then I'll do it! So we immediately returned home, walked inside and linked arms and gave each other a lovey-dovey looks. Belinda's scrunched-up face was a picture. I resumed horse riding practice and got around my allergy problems by using sachets and spraying perfume all over myself. It worked at first, but then I started getting allergic to the sachets too. Cooper immediately took notice and the next day he showed up with some homemade herbal sachets. Not only did they help cure my allergy, but they also had a calming effect on me. Without the allergy bothering me, I could focus on practicing, and soon I was back to my amazing former riding self again. I showcased my talents to the club and everyone seemed impressed. A talent like you should be head of the club. Yeah, I may not be a big talker like someone I know, but actions speak louder than words. Belinda was clearly jealous of my rise to success, so she pulled some mean pranks on me at school. One time she suddenly turned nice and offered me a coffee, but it turned out she had snuck hot sauce in it. I was so mad. I changed her ringtone to fart sounds and called her number. It was hilarious. <laughs> But then she suddenly fainted and was taken to the school infirmary. Oh, come on. She was so hurt she fainted. I told the other students she was faking it. But instead of listening to me, they all took Belinda's side. You're so ungrateful. Belinda even gave you her kidney, yet you scared her so much she fainted? Yeah, you wouldn't be here today without her. What kind of person are you? Feeling deflated and not listened to, I ran off. I stormed home and, on the way, bumped into Cooper. Unable to hold my emotions anymore, I burst into tears. He insisted we went for a walk, and I ended up spilling out everything to him. Hmm, I don't condone what Belinda did, but I kind of see it from her perspective. She's an orphan who longs for a family. She finally found her place in the world, and then you woke up and became a threat. I never thought of it like that before. I realized the best thing I could do was to stop the pointless revenge and put all my energy into my recovery. I stopped hanging around with my clique, then broke up with Damien. I trained hard at the club, but not for my dad or the company, but for myself. Belinda showed up and tried provoking me, but I just ignored her. All my hard work paid off, and I qualified for the tournament. At the tournament, I was leading the race and felt unstoppable. But then some bees started buzzing around Jackal's face. He freaked out and started bucking. Then everything went dark. I woke up in hospital feeling drowsy and saw someone rummaging in my bed. Belinda, what are you doing? Then Cooper appeared. Is this what you're after? I saw Belinda swap the sachets for pollen ones to attract the bees. I bet she also switched the ones before to worsen your allergies. What did I do to deserve this? It's so easy for you, isn't it? Because of you, I've lost everything! Belinda, how could you? Apologize to Audrey right now! No, I won't! This is all your fault! It's all my fault. Many years ago, I was in a relationship with Belinda's mom. We ended on amicable terms, but it was only in her final days that she told me the truth. Belinda is my daughter. I didn't want to upset anyone, so I kept it to myself. But then when you needed a kidney and Belinda ended up being a match, I used this as a reason to suggest adopting her. Then you woke up and we were so happy. I didn't realize how this had affected Belinda or you, Audrey. Please forgive me. I want to put it right. Mom and me were so shocked and Mom told him to go and find Belinda. 
After Dad left, Mom hugged me. Sweetie, both you and Belinda deserve warmth and love. I promise things will be better from now on. As I left the hospital the next day, I saw Belinda walking toward me. I'm so sorry. You've been nothing but good to me, and I was horrible. I was so worried about you when you were in the coma. But when you woke up, I got scared no one would want me anymore. I care about you, Audrey. You're my sister. I wrap my arms around her. You've always been a sister to me, Belinda. But please, no more pranks. Then I saw Cooper walking over to me, holding a huge balloon. Looks like you have company. I'm glad you both made up. Here, I got you this. One day at school, while I was busy with my homework, suddenly a boy stormed in my place. Hey, beauty, I get a dare. Would you mind giving me a kiss? What? I very, very mind. Get off me. But he still leaned towards and trying to press his dry as the bark of a tree lips on mine. No way. All I gave him was a slap on the face to shake the last sense back to him. Come on. It's just a true for dare game. Don't need to overreact like that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Just give him a kiss, Cheryl. And don't act so highly. It's not every day that someone offers to kiss you. <laughs> Gosh, these dudes might as well need to be taught a lesson then. Hey, stop. It's a game to you, but not to her. And she has a right to act on her own will. Huh? Andrew was defending me. What's wrong with him today? Who told you I need your help? Those boys really killed my mood today, that I couldn't focus on anything else. All of a sudden, I heard Green Day playing, and soon I lost my negative thoughts to the song and became completely absorbed in it. And you know who's the idiot that played it. The next day, Diana took me out for some retail therapy. Hey, about yesterday, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine now. Such a relief, Cheryl. But just a little reminder, please don't misunderstand that my boyfriend has something with you. He was just being kind, you know. What? Me? With your boyfriend? As if. Even if he's the last boy on the planet, I'd never like him. <laughs> really? That's all I want to hear. I get this, please. Sometimes I couldn't understand my friend. But what if he still had feelings for me? Would I... What am I thinking? Get yourself together, Cheryl. After a fun shopping day, we separated and I went home to see Mr. Hardy wearing apron, doing something in the kitchen. Ah, uh, you're home. Juliana is in Paris for two weeks. For some urgent business. Two weeks? How was I supposed to live with just these two obnoxious people for the whole two weeks? But wait, Juliana is on a business trip? How strange. She's never done that kind of thing. Right that moment, I got a message saying she had to fly out to negotiate some deal for the cosmetics she was using. Well, that explained. Perhaps getting married made her become more mature, I guess. Cheryl, go wash up. Dinner is waiting. I've prepared your favorite. And the food Mr. Hardy cooked was... surprisingly delicious. More strangely, over the next few days, I realized being with them wasn't a nightmare as I thought it would be. Mr. Hardy was an excellent cook and always tended to my favorite list. So to pay back, I volunteered to do the cleaning. You're doing the dishes? Make sure you don't break any. Let me save them. No need. You do. He's right. I couldn't finish it all by myself. We were working peacefully when I felt something cold on my cheek. He's splashing water on me. Angrily, I splashed him back. It was fun, except for how soaked our hairs and shirts were. Gosh, how old are you both? One day after dinner, Andrew asked me to go with him to the grocery store. Okay, fine, but I wouldn't carry any bags. Then we took a stroll around the neighborhood. The city at night with flickering lights did have some soothing effect. Yours is chocolate, right? Can I take a bite? Then he had like half of my ice cream. Oops, sorry. You can have mine. That's fine. Seemed like our princess is in a good mood today. Normally you'd chase me all the way down the street. That's true. I hate to admit, but since Andrew and his dad moved in, I found myself happier and more relaxed. Hey, did I say something wrong? And for some reason, my words naturally blurted out about how lonely I had felt in my own house. When my parents passed away, Juliana is my only family, but she's too drowned in her own flashy hobbies, sparing no time for me. Not until recently, she spent more time at home, <sighs> which is good anyway. I didn't know that, Cheryl. So we have more in common than I thought. Actually, my childhood wasn't as wonderful either. My mom and dad got divorced when I was seven. I just thought it's because they're not meant for each other, but turns out mom was having an affair which made Dad devastated and closed his heart to everyone until he met your aunt. Poor Mr. Hardy and Andrew. My aunt actually had changed ever since she's been with Mr. Hardy too. Maybe they're the right ones for each other. We kept walking along the riverbank and chatting with Andrew wasn't bad like I thought or even good in some way. Suddenly, he tripped over something and fell on the ground. Gosh, you're bleeding. Sit here, I'm gonna buy some bandage. 
but I didn't manage to get too far before witnessing a scene I wish I didn't. A day after Juliana came back from the business trip, she immediately called for a family meeting and announced the unexpected. Cheryl, Andrew, we have something to tell you both. Mr. Hardy and I decided our relationship has come to an end. What? Why so sudden? Dad? Mr. Hardy didn't say anything, but seemed not to take it well either. Then Andrew turned to me for an explanation, but I just couldn't bear his look. It's just, we realize we're not for each other. You'd better move out soon. Empty and awkward atmosphere covered the room. The news hit us hard. Mr. Hardy kept silent until they were about to go. You should cook for Cheryl more often. She likes stir-fry veggie. Drop it! Stop acting like you understand me better than my aunt! Get out of my house now! Take care, Cheryl. They've gone out of our lives, just like I always wanted. But what is this aching feeling? Days after, at school, Andrew kept trying to talk to me, but I avoided him by all means, until once he took me a surprise and pulled me to a corner. Cheryl, tell me why did they break up? You must have known something, right? I... I... Didn't you listen to my aunt? They're just not made for each other. You're... You're hiding something. Stop bothering me. We're not related anymore. I walked away as fast as possible. Seeing his face was the last thing I wanted now. Thank God Diana found me. I'm sorry for that, Cheryl. By the way, I dumped Andrew. Like father, like son. Better stay away from the mall. Yeah, it should have been that from the start. Things went peacefully for a week. Diana was always around, and soon my days were filled with her presence and care. I felt thankful to have a best friend like her around at this time. Then, one day, Andrew suddenly approached me in rage. It's you, right? What? Then he showed me the lipstick he found in his dad's bag, and some lip marks on his shirt as well. That's when he suspected Mr. Hardy was having an affair, causing the rift between him and Juliana. But dad said he would never do that, and I trusted him. What happened with mom devastated dad, so no way would he do the same thing with anyone else, which left you the only one who's behind this, right? What? How is it here? Yes, it's me. It's me. So what? But why did you have to do it? Isn't it? The day after, I asked Diana to meet me in a cafe. Diana, my aunt and Mr. Hardy are getting back together. Can you believe? H how could it be possible? Ah, one more thing. You forgot this at my place? I... I... Why did you do this, Diana? Is it just because you're afraid I would steal your Andrew? I told you I'd never steal my bestie's boyfriend. What's going on here? Didn't we just fake date Diana? Andrew? You guys just faked date? But why? Then he said that he just moved back here. He wanted to talk to me to untangle the misunderstanding in the past in hopes everything would get cleared and we might get back together. But Diana approached him and suggested they fake date to see how I would react first. I thought it's kind of a good idea, so I agreed. Have you both lost your mind? Why did you suggest such a thing? It, it bugged me when seeing you living together, so, so I had to separate you again. Again? What does this mean? It's not the first time you did this, right? I... I... I couldn't bear seeing you together because... Because I like you, Cheryl. For a long time now. So, back years ago, when you became Andrew's girlfriend for some stupid game, I tried to end it as soon as possible. Turns out, Diana paid the boys to fabricate the story of Andrew setting up the game to deceive me for money, and intentionally let me hear their conversation. So that meant, I wrongly accused Andrew. I trusted you as a best friend and share everything with you, even my insecurities. But you just use it as a means to satisfy your selfishness? I... I didn't mean it. And now you're even willing to sabotage my family's happiness for your own needs. You've gone too far. Diana was wrong, but not this time. Actually, Andrew, Diana wasn't the reason why your dad and my aunt broke up. It's me. No, it's her who put the lipstick on my dad's bag, remember? It's true, but my aunt never found this lipstick. Ironically, your dad was supposed to be accused of having an affair, but in fact, my aunt was the one who really did. You remember the night we went to the grocery store? I was looking for a pharmacy, but happened to see my aunt hands in hand with another man. Why is your Paris business trip involved having a fling with another man? Do I have to remind you that Mr. Hardy and you are getting married? Don't you love him? Cheryl, I love him dearly. I don't know what's gotten into me. I'm sorry. Say it to Mr. Hardy. That's when I know my aunt wasn't faithful to your dad, so I forced her to break up with Mr. Hardy immediately. Why keep it from us? I know your dad and you wouldn't take this well after what happened with your mom, so I didn't want to rub the old scars. I'm sorry, Andrew. I went home to see Juliana with her suitcases. 
Cheryl, you're home. Sit here, I want to talk to you. There's something I wasn't honest with you, Cheryl. Then she admitted that there's actually no gold diggers trying to deceive her. It's her who put all of the relationships in ruin, as she quickly got bored with them and quickly turned into another guy when still in a relationship. I lied because I don't want you to think ill of me, but I didn't expect it would make you hold a negative opinion on boys. Trust me, pumpkins. One day you'll definitely find a boy who loves you truly. Then hold him dearly, will you? Don't be like me. Lapsed up into old ways and ended up losing an incredible man. I'm glad you learned that. And now I have to go. I was asked to take care of you until you're 18. And hell, you are now. <laughs> I believe my pumpkin can live on her own feet from now. Bye. I hope you could lead your independent life too, auntie. Now, all the truth was revealed. Letting out the secret that was relieving after all. I was sitting on our favorite spot at school. But beside me wasn't Diana anymore. I got this letter from her in my locker this morning. Hi, Cheryl. I apologize again for my selfish acts. I should have known better that love cannot be forced, and I am also grateful to your big heart. I always cherish every moment shared with you. Though it's hard, I have to go now to find a way to heal myself. Take care, Cheryl. Diana. Kiss. My best wishes are with you, Diana. Why the dumb face? Without letting me crack a word, out of nowhere, Andrew snatched my earphones. Green Day? You're too predictable, Cheryl. Why are you here? I saw you sitting alone, so I guess you might need a companion. Yeah, Diana's moved to another city, you know. Yeah. She'll be fine. Andrew, I'm sorry for wrongly accusing you back then. I was too childish and impulsive. I should have listened to you first. That's fine. Actually, I have something to tell you too. You know, when you said you're the one who broke up Dad and Juliana, I was really angry. But, but a part of me was kind of happy, because that would mean you didn't want us to be cousins. Because I didn't want that either. I want more. Cheryl, would you be my girlfriend again? Hmm, let's see. I might or might not want that. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. I'd love to, Andrew. Then he pulled me for the most magical kiss ever. Ah, uh, I forgot. Dad asked you to drop by for dinner tonight. Did he? Yeah, I should have missed that. I will ask him to make fried chicken burrito. Baked ZT? Greek salad? Isn't it too much? I'm not finished. So, this is the Roomba Club. Hmm, why isn't the guy here? Was I wrong? No way, I did lots of digging. Oh, don't take this the wrong way. I'm not a stalker. I'm just doing my job. It's obvious that there is something fishy about this case. Want to know the details? Please like and subscribe. I'm Faith McKinnon, the only daughter of a private detective. That probably sounds cool, but my dad is actually really carefree. Maybe that's why he only took on enough trivial cases to make ends meet. I haven't always paid much attention to his business, though. I mainly focus on studying, so our future can be brighter. W what What are you saying, sir? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm in. You can count on me. Faith, I just got a big job. A customer had paid him handsomely to investigate this case. A girl named Selena Martinez just had an accident and fell into a coma. But there was no CCTV on the road, and the heavy rain erased all traces. The police couldn't find any evidence, so they concluded that it was a traffic accident. But Mr. and Mrs. Martinez didn't believe it and suspected her boyfriend, Oscar Davis, was involved. Thus, they had to rely on my detective dad. Ha <laughs> ha, looks like folks need my help after all. Me, McKinnon, can solve any case. Conveniently, those two kids go to the same school as me, so Dad asked me to keep an eye on them. Okay, nothing complicated, so I agreed. That's why I'm here. I heard Oscar loved Roomba and never missed a class, but why hasn't he shown up today? I was looking around when a hand patted my shoulder. What are you doing? <gasps> Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Oh my, am I dead? Because I swear I'm seeing an angel. Look at his eyelashes framing those beautiful hazel eyes in that super touchable long dark hair. Hey, you still with me? Are you here to join our Roomba squad, princess? If so, you're looking at the right person. I'm Zane, head of this club. Uh, yes, I'm Faith. I love Roomba. Well, joining this club will surely help me with my mission, won't it? But I knew absolutely nothing about this Roomba dance thingy. Gosh, how could they dance with those heels so freaking high? I tried to copy other students, but my legs were just not listening, causing me to stumble. And luckily, Zane caught me just in time. Are you good? Let me show you some basics before you hurt yourself. Or someone else. 
Then Zane took me aside, and we started to dance with his arms wrapped around my waist. With each twirl, I felt like he was pulling me closer and closer, and I couldn't stop blushing. Was Roomba supposed to always be like that? Then our eyes met. His gaze was so soft and dreamy and... angry? Zane stopped in the middle, and his face darkened. Right at the door was Oscar! Zane immediately dragged him outside. I sneakily followed them to see they were quarreling at a corner. Drop your act already. Let me see, Selena. Please. You have some nerve asking to meet my sister after what you did to her. How many times do I need to tell you that I had nothing to do with her accident? Keep lying all you want, but I'll find evidence. You'll soon have to pay for what you did. Zane was Selena's brother? That meant we were on the same boat. The investigation could have been going much more smoothly if I'd known this earlier. I went straight to Zane, saying, Selena Martinez was your sister? Yeah, why are you- I'm helping to investigate her accident. Oh, really? Zane was surprisingly cooperative in helping me answer some questions for the investigation. My parents just can't help but suspect Oscar had something to do with it. He's kind of obsessed with our Selena. She'd rejected him many times, but he wouldn't stop pining for her. And eventually she gave in. But that only kicked in his possessive behaviors. He bought gifts and controlled what she wore every day. He followed my sister everywhere, even to the restroom to make sure she's safe, and climbed to her window to check her sleep every night. Jeez, that's crazy. Selena was having too much and decided to end things with him for good. But after that, she was found unconscious in an accident. It can't be a coincidence. I'm sure Oscar's obsession has turned into rage. Wow, it really was impossible to judge someone just on appearances. Oscar looked so nice, yet... To gather more information, I asked around about Oscar and Selena. Selena used to be kind of mean, but ever since she and Oscar became an item, she's like another person. Much kinder and nicer, I would say. Yeah, they were really sweet together. I was surprised to hear she broke up with him. Huh? Sweet? Are they talking about another Oscar? I even went to Oscar's neighbors and discovered that his mom was the head of the Medical and Pharmaceutical Association. All I heard were good things about him. Oh, that sweet boy. He always runs right out to help me carry groceries. He even gave me his phone number to call him when I need help. Oscar is a real good kid. Every year on Halloween, he decorates a whole haunted house for the neighborhood kids and stays out there until every last trick-or-treater leaves with a sack full of candy. Things are getting way confusing. It's like Zane and the others were describing two totally different people. Why are you following me? I looked up to see Oscar. I, I, I'm not. I tried to run, but he grabbed me. Please don't lie to me. I know why you're here, and I want to cooperate. Because I too want this all to be over quickly. Only then can I see Selena again. Okay, I should give him a fair chance and make my own judgments about this guy. And I'm also really curious to hear his side of the story. I used to be picked on pretty often, until Selena started standing up for me. She was truly my knight in shining armor, <laughs> and that's when I knew I'd fallen in love with her. And she actually liked me back. And that's when she came to do charity work with me for the first time, and we happened to meet in the Roomba Club and become partners. We were happy in love. Selena even bought me gifts and planned surprise dates. Things were good. Great, actually. But suddenly she broke up with me, then got into the accident. I just really want to see if she's okay. This guy seemed very sincere. A bit silly, even. He couldn't be the one who could scheme such a hateful plan, could he? But why does nothing match what Zane told me earlier? One of them must be lying. But who? Things were becoming perplexing. But that evening, when I got home, my dad told me that he had found a dash cam from another car, which filmed the moment Oscar's car hit Selena's. Case closed. Who would have thought a $15,000 case like this could be solved so easily? I'm such a genius. <laughs> With this pace, I'd be a millionaire before you knew it. Huh? That's it? No, something didn't add up here. My gut was telling me that Oscar the Sim couldn't be the cunning and ruthless mastermind behind all this. The next morning, I was startled by Dad's loud excitement. I'm on a headline, baby! Turns out the video had spread like wildfire on the news. But that's not all. Another part of the story was also revealed. Oscar, Dr. Davis's son, loved Selena Martinez but was rejected, so he threatened to tell his mom to cancel their new medicine's license. Selena still resisted him, so her family lost the medicine's permit and suffered great damage. Meanwhile, Oscar got so mad that he caused the accident. So there's some family conflict involved too, not just teenage love? 
Seeing loads of angry comments, I was so worried that I immediately ran to the Roomba Club to find Oscar. There, I found Zane grabbing Oscar's collar. I always know it's you. How are you going to deny it now? Wait, stop! Upon seeing me, Zane loosened his fists. You're going to pay for this. I swear I didn't do it, Faith. I don't know where that video came from. Please help me. I also felt things couldn't be that simple, so I came home to check the video again. Finally, I found something that was off. If the impact happened at that angle, Selena's left arm would have been injured, but it wasn't, according to the hospital's record. Dad, I think the video of the accident was fabricated. We need to confirm Selena's condition before making any conclusion. Well, this case is already closed. The Martinez family asked me to wrap it up as soon as the evidence was discovered. Why such a hurry? They spent all this money but didn't want a thorough investigation? The next day, I decided to investigate myself. I disguised as a nurse to sneak into the hospital, but Selena's room was strictly guarded. I had to find another entrance. Huh? Is that sane? Right then, he saw me and immediately dragged me into a corner, signaling me to keep silent. Be careful, or they will see you. What are you doing sneaking around? I'm afraid my parents might be doing something sketchy. Explain. I've heard them talking with the press to keep posting those defaming articles about Oscar's family. And they even mentioned something about revenge. So you followed them here? Suddenly, I was forbidden from seeing Selena as the doctor said she needed absolute peace to heal. But it feels like my parents don't want me to talk to her. Come to think of it, it's also them who made me suspect Oscar from the beginning. That's what I thought. But why should I believe you when you've been saying awful things about Oscar? Maybe you're working with them. Last semester, I studied abroad. That's when Selena and Oscar started dating. All the things I knew about them were told by my parents. Actually, believe me or not, I'm going to find out the truth with or without your help. Seeing his determined attitude, my heart softened a little. If it's true that your parents were up to something bad, are you still willing to expose them? If so, what they did is just wrong, and I need to know why. Right at that moment, I got a call from Dad. Well done, Faith. You were right. That video was fabricated. I believe you, Zane! Three days later, it was reported that Oscar's mom resigned due to the recent scandal. Then Dad showed up in an unusually neat suit. You better go get ready, kiddo. The Martinez has invited us for dinner to celebrate solving the case. I think they might throw in a bonus on top of the initial amount. My dad is quite the performer, isn't he? All right, time to solve this case. At the dinner, everyone seemed extremely happy, especially Mr. Martinez. Thank you so much for giving us the closure we needed for our daughter's accident. No, I have to thank you for giving me such a big case. Now people will line up to have me solve their cases. <laughs> they kept hosting, laughing, and talking happily like two old friends. Then Mrs. Martinez went to get some more food for them. I turned to see Zane, looking a bit sad. I didn't expect Dr. Davis could stoop this low. She got what she deserved. How dare she say our medicine was of poor quality and rejected the license? She almost ruined our plan to make loads of money. What a wet blanket. Luckily, we got quick-witted to stage a fake accident to frame her boy. Hearing that, Mrs. Martinez quickly ran to cover her husband's mouth, but couldn't make it in time. Aha! Uh -huh. So you admit everything. I recorded them all. This will be evidence to expose you in court. We admit nothing. Check your recording. When I turned it on, it was all static. We couldn't hear anything. Unfortunately for you, this is the family business room, equipped with signal jammers and anti-eavesdropping devices. So you have no evidence. Mom, stop it. Right then, Oscar walked in with Selena on a wheelchair. Why are you here? You're supposed to be at the hospital resting. All thanks to my mom. She knows someone in the hospital and could help Selena get out. Or else, how long were you planning to keep her locked up? It turns out Selena had woken up a week ago, but her parents kept it a secret. That's why Zane wasn't allowed to visit her out of fear that everything would come to light. Mom, that's not enough for you. You asked me to pursue Oscar at first to get close to his mom. But when the plan didn't work out, you then forced me to break up with him. But I've already fallen in love with Oscar for real. It broke my heart to do so. That night, I was driving in a totally lost mind and crashed into a tree. But who knows my own cruel parents would use their daughter's accident as an excuse to frame Oscar and his family. Oh, honey, you're saying this because you're not well yet. No, we all know what you did. Just confess. Oscar and his mother are good people who don't deserve any of this. I love you guys. That's why I have to make it right. 
You ungrateful little traitor. Everything we do, we do for you. But it doesn't matter. A court needs concrete evidence, not just the words of a girl. I'm really disappointed in you guys. I hope that you would step up and take accountability. You could have gotten a reduced sentence, but I guess now we need to turn in the real evidence. I held up the confession video of the person hired by Selena's parents to fake the dash cam. At this point, Mrs. Martinez fell to her knees, sobbing dramatically. I paid you to find the evidence against the Davises, not against us. Sorry, but we refuse to accept your money. We don't work for you. We work for justice. Soon enough, Mr. and Mrs. Martinez saw their day in court for their schemes, and the Davises' name was cleared. After the sentencing, Oscar's mom approached me and my dad. Thank you so much for fighting for the truth. You've saved our family's reputation. Our society needs more people who work and live for righteousness like you. I owe it all to Faith. Things would not have turned out the way they did without her master plan. From the fake resignation, to Selena's hospital escape, and even arranging a play to expose the Martinez's. It's true that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, isn't it? She's about to surpass my skill. I'll let you keep this for a few more years. It's true that I hadn't been interested in my father's job before, but this case made me realize my passion for solving crimes. So, we'll see. Now all the crazy things finally settled, Oscar and Selena are back together after everything they've gone through. They deserve to be happy with each other. Is this just me, or is their story really similar to Romeo and Juliet? Except, in the end, they're happy together. Suddenly, Zane walked up behind me. Wanna dance? Are you sure? You're the one who said I was a danger to myself and others. Then it's a risk I'm willing to take. I was taking mom to the hospital when noticed the nurse was trying to hurt her. Excuse me, miss. You're making a mistake. That syringe should go into the brachial artery. You're in the wrong location and that's dangerous. Are you trying to tell me that I don't know how to do my job? I have been doing this job longer than you have been alive. No, you're going to hurt my mother. Bummy, be quiet. Stop disrespecting and let the nurse do her job. No, no, don't touch her. What is going on here? Your nurse got the location of the brachial artery wrong, and I was trying to correct her, but she wouldn't listen. I'm sorry, she reads a lot of books, and she is convinced she knows as much as a doctor. But she is correct, the nurse is wrong. Ma'am, your daughter just saved your life. Hello, my name is Bummy from Nigeria, and I am just 15, but I'm already the world's youngest doctor. And today, I will tell you about my crazy adventure. Before that, please like and subscribe. It all started when I was little. My mom used to take me to the library where she worked and leave me to wander around. That's when I found my interest in medicine. By the time I was six, I knew everything about the human body. But it only started to bloom when I met Dr. Jeff the other day. He told me I had a photographic memory and encouraged me to pursue medicine. While my classmates struggled to understand fractions, I had already figured out algebraic equations. School became boring, so after school, every day, I would go to Dr. Jeff's hospital, and he would let me observe everything and instruct me to perform some procedures from simple to more complex. Mummy, you've learned too fast. I hope someday you have a chance to spread your wings further, because soon I'll have nothing else to teach you. Then, one day, I was sitting on the porch to finish my medical illustration when I noticed a group of foreigners approaching. Turns out they are American aid workers who would be staying in our neighborhood for a while with some humanitarian projects. Days after, they were carrying out an immunization exercise. Everything was going great when suddenly one of them fell to the ground. I ran to the scene as fast as I could to see him choking. Blood was nearly drained from his face. Without thinking further, I ran back into my house and grabbed my aid kit but was blocked by some woman. Kid, go play somewhere else. Don't take up oxygen here. Someone's choking. Do you want me to help your friend or not? Upon that, I immediately dunked the Swiss knife in alcohol to sterilize them, made an incision, and then placed the straw as a temporary breathing tube. The man who was almost turning blue took his first breath. Let's get into the hospital. It's not far from here. I called Dr. Jeff to inform his situation, and a few days later, the man finally woke up. That night, someone knocked on my door, and I was surprised to see the woman that day. Hello, I'm Carol. Sorry to disturb you, but I came to talk about your daughter. I have traveled far and wide, but in my life, I have never met a genius like her. I think that an American education will do so much for her. 
America. My sweet child was fine here. No offense, though, but I'm afraid a life here is not the ideal environment for her to develop. But America will. We can get her into a gifted program and make sure she reaches her full potential. But who is going to take care of her? She would live with me. I promise I would take care of her like my own daughter. And the next time you see Bummy, she will have become the extraordinary doctor she was meant to be. What do you say, baby? I didn't like the idea of leaving my mom alone here. But that's when what Dr. Jaff said earlier echoed in my mind. Right, that might be a chance that he meant. Mom, I want to go. The goodbyes were quick, and I was on the plane heading to California with an eager heart toward the new land of dreams ahead. Welcome to America. Please feel at home. Oh god, my phone has been buzzing since they talked about you on Facebook. Hang on, I need to take this call. You must be bummy, right? So you're the girl our mom can't shut up about. Hi, nice to meet- You are not welcome here. What? Oh great, you have met my kids, Camille and Ted. Welcome home, Mom. I made dinner. I hoped we could sit and you can tell us all about your trip. Oh, not today, sweet pea. A show wants an exclusive on you right now, bummy. N now But I just... That means people are super excited about you. Come on, let's go. Then Carol took me somewhere else with a bunch of strangers holding some kind of lights that blinded my eyes. Suddenly, a man walked toward me. You're bummy, right? Hi, I'm Martin. Can we start now? Start what? Without letting me catch up on what's going on, Carol already had me chained into stiff clothes and pushed me into a chair opposite the man. Good morning, everyone. Our show today has a special guest, Bummy Alana, the youngest doctor from Nigeria. Or maybe the world. Bummy, why don't you start by telling us your first case? Uh, um, hi. When I was six, my friend was choking on a bone, so I performed the Heimlich maneuver as I read it in a book before. And the show continued with loads of questions about me. I answered them all, but to be honest, I don't know why I was doing what here. I felt such a relief when it ended. But the next morning... Oh, there you are! Rise and shine, my little genius! We have a busy day today! I laid out your clothes, so get ready! We leave in one hour! I thought it was a one-time thing. It rather turned into it my daily routine. I would be in a show after her show, sitting in front of cameras answering ridiculous questions. I felt like I was making a fool of myself. Carol, I'm tired of the cameras and the interviews. I came here to learn. Oh, darling, we want the same thing. A medical university you need to be at is expensive, and these interviews would help us get a sponsor soon, I believe. In the meantime, just focus on that and your study at school, okay? Yeah. I had to enroll at a public high school with her children. But high school here was weird. In Nigeria, I was supposed to be entering 11th grade. But now in America, I had to enroll in the 9th. It's like I was left behind. Not just that, Camille, Carol's daughter, seemed to not like me and was determined to make my life a living hell. She usually hid my textbooks or my shoes before school, making me search everywhere and I ended up being late for school almost every day. Bummy, I don't think you appeared on TV shows that you can discard school regulations. Ugh, it's her, not me! And everything got worse. The people at school continued to undermine me and act like I was a dummy. Excuse me, sir, I got a C-, minus, even though I got all the questions right. Well, you didn't use the words from the textbook like I asked. But I'm correct. Shouldn't I be allowed to express my answers in my own words? Not in my class. Genius, they say. That day after school, I was home to find all of my clothes all torn apart. That's when I saw Camille smirk. You ruined my clothes! Next time, your clothes won't be the only damaged things if you stay here. Okay, fine. That's the last straw. It's time to teach her that I'm not an easy prey for her. I snuck into her room to mess with her makeup products. Ha! Huh, let's see how you can decorate your face to school. But on the way out, I noticed her iPad. Wow, she had a channel herself. And what's this? Hmm, was it Carol and her children? What are you doing here? Startled, I accidentally dropped the sculpture on the floor. Oh god, my sculpture! Do you know what it is? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. You're not making my life miserable enough? Then out of nowhere, Carol barged in. What are you doing? You silly child! Apologize to Bummy right now or you are grounded. Carol, no, it's my fault she didn't- I'm sorry, Bummy. Then she ran out of her room, hands holding her face. I thought I saw her tears streaming down. What happened yesterday kept me tossing and turning the whole night. It's true Camille wasn't the most pleasant person, but Carol shouldn't have done that to her. Bummy, I bet you haven't seen those tools in your hometown before, right? <laughs> haven't you? So you're not ready to dissect a rat yet. Just watch others first. Whatever. 
I came here for new challenges, but all I got was mocking and belittling. Hey, are you alright? I raised my head to see Ted. Is this because of the biology class? Nah, I couldn't care less about them. They just can't accept a new kid more brilliant than they are. If it's not, so what troubles you? Um, why your sister hates me so much? She doesn't. She hates that you are everything she is not. Do you know that this is the longest time our mother has been around us since our father left? But in fact, she wasn't here for us. Then he told us how Carol was always traveling, leaving him and Camille alone, and it surely caused a deep hole in her children, especially Camille. That's why she acted like that to me. Actually, that sculpture was the one Mom brought us when she went to Disneyland years ago. Camille treasured it the most. My heart broke for them, for Camille. I understood her pain, and deep down, I know I needed to do something to help fix this relationship. I came up with the idea of inviting Ted and Camille to go along with me to our shows so that they could spend more time with their mother. Seeing them happy together, it warmed my heart to know family will always be family, no matter what. Soon Ted and I became closer. I didn't know he had quite a craftsmanship with his sculptures. And you know what? Recently Camille seemed to be super nice towards me. We might make good friends in the near future, right? <laughs> then, one night, while we were having dinner, Carol broke an exciting news to me. Bummy, congratulations! Some sponsor sent your application to a top medical school! Good job, Bummy! I haven't been this proud before, my child! Finally, I was a step closer to my dream! A few days later, I was preparing for my interview when I heard Carol screamed. What's wrong? You got a C minus in biology? Someone mailed the sponsor a copy of your test, and now they are uninterested. They don't believe that you're a genius with this low score. Oh, my hard work is gone. Who did this? Ted and I looked at Camille at the same time. She was biting her nails nervously and sweating. So Camille did it to me? After everything happened? Camille, why? Cause, cause mom always loved her than us. What? It's okay. It's good that it happened. I was going to reject it anyway. What? I am very thankful for your kindness all this time, but I couldn't live on your help any longer. But Carol, there's a bigger problem here. You have been so buried in what could happen in the future to other kids, while you have ignored the present. You've ignored your kids. You have been looking in the wrong places for extraordinary kids. Did you know Camille has a YouTube channel with over 10,000 followers? Did you know that Ted is incredible with woodwork? He has a sculpture of you that he carries around, hoping for a day he can give it to you. They need you. Really need you. More than me or any kids need you. So where would you go? I just got admitted into a special program at the John Hopkins University. I was going to tell you tonight. Actually, I was preparing for the interview with them. Oh my, you're stronger than I thought. Can I see it? The sculpture of me, I mean. It's so beautiful. I'm so sorry, guys. I wanted to be someone significant. I wanted to be a big deal, but there is no bigger deal than being your mom. I'm sorry. I'm going to make it up to you. Bummy, I'm so sorry. I was angry and didn't think enough. I am so sorry. And thank you for everything you did to us. I know it's hard for you to forgive me, but... I forgive you. The car was eerily silent as the taxi drove me to the interview. I read my acceptance letter over and over during the trip. I earned it by my hard work, and I was determined to reach my dreams by my own effort. Finally, I could come to the place where people saw my true potential and attempted to help me reach my fullest. And here I was, ready to hold my dream medical degree. Our school has never witnessed a prodigious student like Bummy Alana. Only in one year, she has not only finished her course, but also contributed greatly to endoscopy surgery of the U.S. with her new discovery. Thank you, Mr. Adams. First, I couldn't find enough words to tell how glad I am for all the opportunities America has given me. The dean offered me a position here at the university. I am grateful, but I had to reject it. The woman who first took me to America thought she was saving me, but she never realized I was where I needed to be. My home, where I was much needed than here. So, I'm going back home to my family in Nigeria, and I hope to use all my knowledge to help my community. But whenever American needs me, I'll always be here to offer my humble help. Here they are. Carol, Ted, and Camille were also here to celebrate with me. They were all sad to know I was not staying here, but life is always open for a reunion, right? And finally, I was home with Mom and Dr. Jeff. One day, I was checking the new pack of medical equipment sent from America when I saw a sculpture of me. You sent for me? I didn't think you would make it. As long as it's you, nothing's impossible. Oh, wait. 
Hey guys! Hi, Bummy! Welcome to your mother-daughter channel! My name is Carol, and this is my extraordinary daughter, Camille. They send their regards.